Hello, my name is Dick Baldwin. Welcome to my online lectures for ITSE 2321 Object Oriented Programming Using Java. This series of online lectures will approximate the lectures that I, that I normally deliver in the classroom each semester. When completed, this series of online lectures will consist of many hours of video material broken down into 15 different lectures. Each lecture will be broken down into segments of approximately 15 minutes each to satisfy the YouTube length limitations. This is the beginning of part one of lecture one titled cropping, flipping, and combining pictures. I invite you to visit my college website at the address that I will highlight now. That is where you will find the syllabus for this course along with many other along with other online information regarding the course. I also invite you to visit my personal website at the address that I am highlighting now. When you visit that site you will find more than 600 tutorials that I have written on various aspects of computer programming, DSP, and other computer related topics. Students enrolled in this course are expected to study my tutorial lessons numbered 1600 through 1630 at the address that I am highlighting now. Those students are also expected to study the material in the course textbook. So without further delay, let's enter the world of object-oriented programming. As mentioned earlier, this is the beginning of lecture number seven titled Cropping, Flipping, and Combining Pictures. In this lecture, you will learn how to work directly with individual pixels and keep track of coordinate values, how to copy a portion of one picture into a specific location in another picture, and how to crop and flip a picture. In this lesson we will write a program named Prob02 that uses the class definition shown on the right of your screen along with Barb Erickson's media library with two image files to produce the following three graphic images this one, this one, and this one. The image that is now showing on the right of your screen is the raw image of a butterfly. The image now showing on the right of your screen is the raw image of a beach scene except for the text that has been added in the upper left hand corner of the image. The image that is now showing on your screen shows the image of the butterfly after it has been cropped, copied, flipped and drawn in two locations on the beach scene. The two facing images of the butterflies on the right of your screen are separated by two pixels. Those two images as a pair are centered in the picture of the beach. In addition to the output images the program requires typical 
text output as shown in the center on the left of your screen. This program copies a rectangular portion of a picture of a butterfly into a specific location in a picture of a beach. The program also crops the butterfly picture to the same size as the portion that was copied into the beach scene and flips the crop version to cause the butterfly to face left instead of facing right. Then the program copies the cropped and flipped image of the butterfly to a location that is two pixels to the right of the original copy of the butterfly in the beach scene. As mentioned earlier, the two resulting images of the butterfly within the beach scene are separated by two pixels. They face one another and as a pair they are centered in the picture of the beach as shown on the right of your screen. To successfully write this program, the student must, as a minimum, be able to work directly with individual pixels and keep track of coordinate values, to copy a portion of one picture into a specific location in another picture, and to crop and flip a picture. As usual, I will explain this program by breaking it down into code fragments and explaining the code in the fragments. The driver class for the program is now showing on the right of your screen. So here's a question. What is your interpretation of the syntax, syntax that I am now highlighting? The call to the run method on your right may be new to you. This call expects to receive a reference to an array object of type picture square brackets as a return value. In other words, this code expects the run method to return a reference to an array object capable of storing references to objects of the class picture. The new object of type prob02runner, which is instantiated on the right of your screen, is an anonymous object. By that I mean that its reference is not stored in a local reference variable or a named reference variable or any kind of a named data structure. Instead, the reference to the new object that is returned by the constructor for the class name prob02runner is used in conjunction with the dot operator to immediately call the method named run. The return value from the run method is stored in the local reference variable named pictures. This is a local variable because it is declared inside of the main method. It is a reference variable because it is not declared to be of one of the eight primitive types. Here's another question for you. What is your interpretation of the expression that I am highlighting now. The reference variable named pictures is used to extract references to individual picture objects whose references 
are encapsulated in the array elements in the special array object. The references that are extracted from the array elements are passed as parameters to the print line method. This causes the last three lines of text to be displayed on the command line screen as shown in the on the bottom right of your screen. The class definition for the class named Prob02Runner begins on the right of your screen. The code on the right of your screen shows the constructor for the class. The code in the constructor simply causes the student's name to be displayed on the command line screen that produces the text that you see on the bottom right of your screen or the first line of text that you see on the bottom right of your screen. The method named run that was called in the main method begins on the right of your screen. This code instantiates two picture objects, one here and one here, using image files as input parameters and then displays each of those images by calling the explore method here and here. However, before calling the explore method the second time, this code calls the method named add message which is used to display text on an image in Ericsson's library. This code results in the following images. This one and this one. 